Hi students, good evening. Welcome to this video session. I remain Samuel Dominic Chuku Emeka, aka Sam Dam for Peace. In this video session, we shall uh, discuss uh, the ATM script, the project ATM script. So, uh, ATM is an automated teller machine. Uh, I know most of you are aware aware of it, and you, you know, you probably use it. Uh, the knowledge we are going to use the knowledge from all these topics: uh, numeric and string expressions, conditional statements, loops, lists, dictionaries, functions, in order to do this. So please, it is required that you uh, have knowledge of all these prior topics uh, and that you uh, view the videos in order in the playlist. Uh, view the videos in the playlist in order. So as usual, let's open our Visual Studio code. Uh, we are going to... Uh, we are going to write uh, here in this we will write uh, in this uh, IDE and also in Codio we are going to use both because we need to explain uh, we might need to explain more concepts so uh, let's open a new file um, let's go ahead and uh, name the file by saving it as uh, uh, we want to save it as a Python file uh, Python file and uh, we can call it a uh, ATM, ATM uh, script, ATM script. Uh, and uh, we can also, um, where we write all these, uh, the notepad. Okay, notepad, we can, notepad, uh, this is where we wrote our notepad. So we can also have another notepad just to copy. Uh, we can have that. And we can save it. We can go ahead and save it um, as ATM script. ATM script. This is a text file, so I don't really care about the function. I mean the file name. Uh, this is just to let us know of the notes we'll use. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and begin it. Uh, at least you have an idea of the prior topics because we will need those to do the project. Uh, so you can read this, you know, to save time. You can read it later on. So it says here, request the opening balance. The opening balance has been assigned to a variable called account balance equal to five hundred dollars and twenty-five cents. Uh, notice the use of the float uh, because this is a float data type. 500.25 is a float data type. So they use the float method in order to ensure that the account balance is a float value. The file is set up with a function to print the user options menu 
request the action to be taken on the account. Create a prompt for the user to input the account action. So to input the, this should be one instance, not two instance. There are three possible actions. They have it here. Then create the account for selection B. Test your code. So I want to copy it because we want to do uh, work here. And um, we can highlight everything and go to edit and toggle like comments. Comment it. This is request. Opening balance. So uh, this is what we have. The file is set up with a function to print the user options menu. Request the account, re request the action to be taken on the account. Then you have a prompt for the user to input the account action. There are three possible actions. Uh, D is deposit, W is withdrawal, B is account balance. Create the action for selection B, account balance, to output the account balance to the console. Test your code. Okay, so um, what do we have here? We have this here, uh, user input goes here. Use the if else conditional statement to call function based on user input. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. Uh, so, but they want us to do the B. Uh, create a function to print the account balance, print the account actions, and create the action for outputting the account balance outputting. The following data will be used as input in the test. So this should be uh, user choice B, then the current balance will be 500.25. Okay, so if user choice is B, okay, not D, user choice is uh, B, should be B, uh, and once it's B, they want us to write your current balance is one line, 500.25 is another line. We can do that. So if user choice is B, uh, you see the indentation. Print, print, uh, it already have the user choice, this is the user input. Uh, it asks for the user input, They've, they have given it to us. So when the user selects the option B, it wants us to print the current balance. So this is your current balance, your current balance. Mm. And we have that. And we need a new line, a new line to that. And then we need uh, the account balance, which is this. This account balance, I need this. Let me copy it. Account balance, paste it here. All right. So we need this here, uh, then dot format. We've learned this in previous videos, okay? So, but we need a new line. That is why we had the escape character uh, and then N. That means a new line. Dot format um, account balance. There you go. 
I think that would be it. So let's run this. What would you like to do? B. There you go. Yeah. It worked. Okay. I think we can, if we want to mess things up, we're not mess things up. If you want to play with it, <laughs> no, <laughs> please, <laughs> we don't met, we don't mess things up on a, uh, in, uh, in computer, okay? So, I think we can do this another way. You know, that is the essence of this video. Uh, if I, uh, to show you several ways you can do it. To show you several ways you can do it. We can also do this this way. Your current balance, uh, new line and we would put we will now make this a string a uh, string without the spacing okay without the spacing uh, after the new line then we can now say string string account balance so let's see if I comment if I comment this out uh, let me still have it so I will have 500.25 twice I think we can write this like this let's see I'm gonna clear this run this oh there you go ah uh, oh can I put let me put let me put plus instead yeah ah uh, let me put plus plus I think plus should work let's see yeah there you go B aha uh -huh, there you go yeah so any of this would work any of this would work you have to concatenate it the plus is the concatenate yeah but i prefer this i prefer the first one i really the first one i really really prefer it but you can uh, use the second one we did that in a numeric and string expressions so and this plus sign is the concatenation concatenation you can concatenate strings you see we have to convert this um, account balance which is a float back to string in order to join it with string so that's that uh, and uh, I'm just copy it you can just copy I'm gonna copy it uh, come here um, paste it and I can just comment comment one out okay we can check it oh thank god it works okay so this was pretty straightforward right okay next calculate the balance deposit if the action is deposit, let's, let's just, let me copy this here. Um, I'll comment this one out. And I'll comment this here, comment it. If the action is deposit, use the deposit function. So they want us to use function to add funds to the account you will need to write a function called deposit request from the user the amount to be deposited uh, this value should be stored in a variable called deposit amount use both the input and float methods in order to ensure the deposit amount is a float value uh, calculate a new account balance. The calculation for depositing funds into the account is this. They give us the calculation. 
account balance is account balance plus deposit amount print out the new account balance uh, let's uh, see here deposit input deposit output so this is what they would want the output to be what would you like what would you like to do uh, user choice no this one is the user choice B but they ask deposit amount because the deposit is D the deposit is D so what would you like to do how much would you like to deposit today deposit was this current balance is this okay let's say uh, I'm gonna copy this what they want the output to be uh, they want the output to look like this Uh, and we'll comment this all right so uh with reading this here we don't really need a function but we will write it with a function no problem but let's let's try to write it without a function because this is pretty straightforward this was a conditional conditional uh, statements so let's write this if user choice equal equal now if you put only equal that is an assignment statement yeah equal equal is strictly if they one strictly D deposit then what should happen uh, we want a, a variable deposit amount should ask deposit amount should ask uh, and we want it to be a float okay we want it to be a float so we put floats and we put inputs that we want to uh, assign whatever the user would put in as their amount will be the will be assigned to the variable deposit amount so this will be how much how much would you like to deposit today and uh, from the way they want it they want it in a new line from the way they want it here so we'll put the new line uh, and then the whatever the user enters is assigned to that variable deposit amount deposit underscore amount then it should print well we now have the uh, calculation that account balance would now be uh, account balance plus deposit amount then it should print uh, it should print deposit was deposit was two hundred dollars so remember what we did with this curly brackets and we have to make it we don't want to use any library we did this earlier on in uh, previous videos but I'm not good I we don't want to use any library let's just write it using other methods that we talked about in the previous video so we can use the curly braces uh, this will be dot two floats put it on two floats and we need to put a dollar sign yeah to, it's in dollars so uh, the colon dot two floats deposit was this and then you have a comma here then you have current balance
current balance is uh, we now put another dollar sign and put the colon dot two floats making it two decimal places because it is currency so current balance is that and then you now do dot format and the first one is the deposit which is the deposit amount comma and the second one is the account balance so we want to print this out if the user selects the that is what we want and we should see 200 and then 700.25 so let's clear this and let's run this It says here the standard renderer for the integrated terminal appears to be this though on the computer. Which do you wish to switch to this? Which may no, please. I don't want this. Let's just focus on this. Don't mind that. Okay. What would you like to do? Uh, we'll say the. How much would you like to deposit today? Two hundred. There you go. It worked. Okay. It worked here. Yeah? So, I'll just come and copy this, copy, and uh, paste it. Look at the in, in the indentation, okay. So, I just paste it here. So, I think that is what they want. There you go. Oh, thank God. It, 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 it worked. Okay. But, this is just, we just used, um, we use the conditional statement. We didn't use any function here. I mean, we didn't use the user-defined function. We did not. Because, of course, the print is a function, but it's an inbuilt function. We did not use a user-defined function. And I think probably they want us to use a function. But they still marked it anyway. But let us write this let's write this uh let us write it let's see let's use a function and write it so i'm gonna comment this now i have been using toggle line comment but if you want you can use block comment if you want to block comment we talked about this in the previous video it uses a triple quote triple quote as you see here especially when you have a uh uh, big you know like this big you know if I wanted to use block comment if I wanted I will just come here I will toggle line comment to release it and then I use block comment use the triple quotes to do it you know if you want to yeah but I like the line comment I like it a lot okay now let's uh, I prefer the hash, you know, yeah, but triple quotes is if you have a long comment, then this one looks, this one looks uh, neat, I think. All right, uh, but let's go back to line comment for this because I want to write, oh, first I have to remove it. Let me remove the triple quotes, lock comment and then put line comment now let's say this uh, this one is uh, using conditional statements expressions that's all we used here but let's use functions using functions using functions yeah we we'll still have some conditional though but uh, using function at least and conditional statement because of the if okay so we we'll first of all write the conditional statement if user choice equal equal the uh, the deposit amount deposit amount Is equal to floats we ask what do you want to do 
how much do you want to deposit? Uh, how much would you like to deposit today? Okay. Then they said, if the action is deposit, use a deposit function to add funds to the account. You will need to write a function called deposit. So let's define the function. They say deposit. And then we pass in some parameters. The parameters here would be the deposit amount and the account balance. Deposit amount and account balance. So we put a colon. All right. Then uh, we've used input, we've used float, we've done that. Uh, calculate the new account balance. We process that so the account balance will now be account balance plus deposit amount. Deposit amount. All right. Um, print out the new account balance. So, uh, we have to return, return the new account balance. But we can do it like this. I know it says print out the new account balance. But then they want us to have the deposit and then the account balance and the account balance, new account balance. So we can have something like this, return. After processing, we return. Let's return a list. Let's return a list. Deposit amount. Deposit amount. And then account balance. All right, then let us now call the function. Now, uh, I want to say something here. This is this is within the the conditional statement, so we should not put it up to here. The indentation should still be that is under the conditional statement. Okay, it's no longer under the function. We are finished writing the function, the deposit function. So we now move it here. But it is still under the conditional statement if the user choice selects the deposit. So the we want to call this fun and that's why the function is under the conditional because if the user choice selects this then you now ask how much you want to deposit. Then you now write a function. So the function is under the conditional statement. Then after that, you can call the function inside that conditional statement because this, this will only work if the user choice selects D. If the user choice was something else, then no. This is only working under this condition that the user must select D. Does, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so we can say result equal to, we call the function deposit, and we can put, uh, we can pass in the two values, 200, 200 and, uh, when they passed in a, what did they, 200 and uh, 500.25 200 and then 500.25 all right and when we do that we could have uh, it will return it will return the it will return it as a list it will return it as a list so we can say we can actually say that uh, it 
the deposit amount uh, deposit amount is the first element in the array in the list and then the account balance would be the second element in the list array this is a zero indexed array so of course the first position is zero when we when we uh, after so we are calling this function to work on this so after it works on it when it returns the deposit amount is the first one from the result which is index zero and the account balance is the second one which is index one then we can now say print uh, print this is still under the conditional okay we are out of the function we are calling the function out of the function not inside the function no we call function out of the function but we are now but we are still on the conditional so you see that's the index you see here the the conditional is the main guy because this will only work if the user selects the all right and we can now print uh, we can now print what we did here so we can just print what we did here i'm just gonna copy it and paste here this is if we are using a function yeah now you see i mean why would you use a function anyway when you could just use how many lines of code to write a conditional you know one two three four only four but here you're using a function so it's kind of more work to use a function uh but let's run this let's run it what would you like to do d how much 200 there you go it still works yeah this is the actual using a function here using a function but let's make sure it works in Codeo. Okay, let's make sure it works in Codeo. Uh, I'll comment this out. This one is using conditional using a conditional using only conditional statement using only conditional statement but then let's use and of course if you run it now it won't work if we run it it won't work yeah because there's no output because of the comment now let's paste this one make sure it works and then this one is using both and then we run it yeah thank god it works yeah so um <sighs> with this with this <sighs> i know they asked us to do this you know write a function called deposit but to be honest with you uh is in the in the real world you want to make things easy you really want to make things easy if this was only what you were asked to calculate why would you want to use a function so i mean using only the conditional statement is much more easier it saves time so i understand they want you to do this uh, but if you i mean if you use only this if you use only this i will i'll give you the credit i will yeah because we are modeling the real world as well now in your workplace if your supervisor says you must use this then you have to use it yeah but normally in the workplace they'll just say hey we want you to do a program that does this stuff you know some t i mean they will tell you that they will normally give you software that you're gonna use however they won't specifically say okay you must do it this way you must use a function you must do it this i mean provide we want things to work that's the main thing 
so it will be great if you it will be great if you use the deposit function that they won which we used it will be great if you did that yeah but if you do only this conditional statement and it still works if you write it well you know i'll take that i'll take it i mean i'll i'll prefer you go by what they said but if you still have this i'll still take it okay now let's get to the next one calculate the balance withdrawal uh let's uh, let's copy this I'm gonna copy the whole thing. And it looks like they gave us a hint. Okay, we'll look at that. Ah, uh, so we'll paste this here and let's comment it. Let's use block comment. If the action is withdrawal W use the withdrawal function to remove funds from the account you will need to define a function called withdrawal request from the user the amount to be withdrawn uh, this value should be stored in a variable called withdrawal amount use both the input and float methods in order to ensure the withdrawal the withdrawal amount is a float value yeah please uh please please i remember something now before this please use a function okay please use a function <laughs> use a function because i don't know about your rubric i think the rubric specifies that a function will be used yeah so please use a function <laughs> i just as i'm reading this i said okay hey i think uh, so please if the if the rubric specifies that you must use a function then yes but if the rubric does not specify that you must use a function then i'll be flexible okay so it says they are used both the input and float methods in order to ensure the withdrawal amount is a float value ensure the withdrawal amount is not greater than the account balance okay make sure it's not greater yeah because if it's greater that will run into overdraft it will run into overdraft and the bank normally will charge a fee for it or they will not allow the customer to withdraw the money if the withdrawal amount is greater than the account balance print the following message withdrawal amount is greater than your account balance of this your account balance of this okay ensure you display the withdrawal amount and the account balance with the dollar sign and two decimal points okay if the withdrawal amount is less than or equal to the account balance then calculate a new account balance the calculation for withdrawing funds from the account is account balance equal to account balance minus withdrawal amount print the following message print withdrawal amount was this your current balance is this all right uh they gave us a hint here yeah? hint to format to format a currency to two decimal places all right, we'll, we'll look at this. I mean, I like the one I use, but we'll, we'll look at this as well. Yeah, I like the curly braces that I use, but we'll also look at that. Okay, I'm gonna come here and make these triple quotes. So this is the hint to format. All right. Uh, so 
the output will be how what would you like to do uh, which is the first statement what would you like to do that's the first statement but if the user selects w then it says how much would you like to withdraw today so let's get this output the output should look like this how the output should look like uh, the output should look like this so it looks like we have two outputs actually we have we have a uh, two outputs uh, if the withdrawal amount is greater than we have to print something if the withdrawal amount is greater than the account balance we we'll print out something we we'll print out a message and then if the withdrawal amount is less than the less than or equal to the account balance we find the new account balance and we we'll print out a message to the user to the customer okay so we say let's define a condition if user choice equal equal w withdrawal uh, then we have withdrawal amount withdrawal amount is a float input ask the user how much would you like to withdraw today how much would you like to withdraw today and they want it on a new line so we push the escape character and and we have another then we have a a condition if the withdrawal amount is greater than is greater than the account balance so we have another if okay this is a nested if we have another if if withdrawal amount is greater than account balance okay we put the colon then print we print uh, print your withdrawal amount is greater than your account balance of this okay let's use let's see whether we can use this hint they gave us for the they want us to print it with i mean we can print this as we've been doing okay as we've been doing we can let's try that first let's try that first withdrawal amount uh is greater than your account balance of this this is what we need here this message here is what we need here this message so like we've been using we can do it this way uh withdrawal amount uh we put the dollar uh dot two f two floats withdrawal this is greater right that is is greater yeah is greater than your account balance of uh, we have another curly press here put this dot two floats and then dot oh i have to put uh, i have to put this in double quotes then dot format we have the withdrawal amount and then account balance there you go so uh, yeah we've done this let's clear this and then let's test this let's test this 
what would you like to do double you how much would you like to withdraw so the account balance is uh because this is a new condition the account balance initializing the account balance is 500.25 so let's see if it's greater than that so let's put 900 oh good see that 900 is greater than your account balance of this yeah good yeah but if we want to use the hint they gave us they gave us this hint here we can use this kind of hint if you want to do this another way let's let's uh, comment this If we want to do this another way with what they gave us, we can do this here. Uh, uh, dollar sign percent dot two floats. All right, and then you have percent withdrawal. Oh, sure. You have percent withdrawal amount, um, and you put a comma, and you put the quotes here, double quotes, is greater than your account balance. Like I'm trying to teach you another way you can write, you can write, you can print this out. But I prefer, honestly, I prefer my, this, I prefer the curly braces. I mean, so far to me, that's the best way. I prefer it a lot. And that is new with Python 3, you know. So, but this, uh, uh, this way we are writing it now is another way. That's what they provided in the hint. This uh, dollar sign percent dot two floats. Yeah. But I don't like this. But let's let's do it and see. I think it should work. It's greater than your account balance of. Uh, put a comma here. Uh, put the double quotes dollar sign percent dot two floats, and then put percent account balance. There you go. let's try this let's try this what would you like to do w how much 750 yeah it still works thank god it still works okay uh let's before we continue you know be, before we move on it's good to do this one at a time it's good to do it one at a time so let's test this. We, we've we've done this first condition greater than. Uh, let us. Uh, I, I know we tested it here, but let's see it in Codio. Um. So uh, I'll put this. All right. Check it. Oh wow. Check one failed, check two passed. What what would you like to do? How much would you like to withdraw today? So this is withdrawal amount was okay. So the check two was the one that passed, which is if it is greater than if it's greater than the if the withdrawal amount is greater than the account balance. But the check that failed is the one if it is less than or equal to, because this is a hundred dollars, which is less than, yeah. So let's try that one. So it's, we are still good. We didn't flunk at all. No, it's just we've not completed the code. So let's go ahead and complete this code. Um, we'll come and add another condition if withdrawal amount withdrawal amount is less than or equal to less than or equal to account balance 
put the colon what should you do get the new account balance so account balance is account balance minus the withdrawal amount all right and then what do you do next you print print uh, withdrawal amount was this comma current balance is this okay that's not a problem withdrawal withdrawal amount is this I'm gonna go back to curly braces okay I prefer it. Uh, this here the two floats withdrawal amount is this uh, comma current current balance current balance is this yeah. dollar sign curly braces dot two floats all right then dot format withdrawal amount account balance there you go <coughs> yeah i think this is what yeah so let's clear this and run this uh withdraw how much hundred there you go yeah yep 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 so we just add this code um Add this code here. All right, and run it. Oh wow! Check one, failed. Check two, passed. How much withdrawal amount is this? Oh, withdrawal amount. Is hundred dollars current balance system? Oh, was <laughs> hi. This is is and was problem. <laughs> this is is and what? This is is. This is was. <laughs> hey, wow. <laughs> so you see, you should not get. Frustrated? No, I, I, I just, I've been saying it. The first virtue of a programmer is patience, 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 patience. Number two is perseverance. Perseverance. You don't come and say, ah, uh, you know, if you even if you get it wrong several times, no problem. Relax. Go back, think about it, come back again, and you get pray to God, you get it right. You know, work on it, research on it. Ah, so please, you know, don't, uh, don't. I know you get frustrated. No, people get frustrated. You've run it so many times, it doesn't work. And then you know, I'm here. That's why I'm, I'm here to help. So this should work now. Thank God, all of them worked. Yeah. So it was just was. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Okay. Um, but well, it's almost done. ATM summary, your final function in the ATM is to print the customer summary. Final input, what would you like to do? If the user is Q, thank you for banking with us. If the user choice is Q, then it will be thank you for banking with us. But well, that's straightforward. Uh, if oh you see this should not be the indentation we should be on a new because this is a new conditional if user choice equal equal q and you can also use double quotes here it doesn't matter print thank you for banking with us 
Okay, let's test this. What would you like to do? Q. Thank you for banking with us. Yeah, this one is pretty straightforward. Final output. Check it. Yeah. Okay. Thank God it worked. All right. So, uh, please. This is it. You can now uh, put the necessary comments. You can now put it and, you know, write your necessary comments and uh, submit the project. Okay, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please ask me. And you have a good night.